This video is about the curves box inside Sagelight Editor. This is the curve box right here. Um, in the quick edit mode it's, and the pro quick edit mode, you can press this button. You can also get to it with the power curves, which has a lot more options for the curves. Curves can be very useful in an image. For example, if I just move this curve down here, you can see that I've really made a difference in this image here. And then I can change the curve. I can adjust various parts of the curve to do what I want to do with this image. And so you can see that I've made a, a very powerful change to this image in just a couple seconds. Before I show how to use the curves box, this video is really more about how to use the curves box because it has a lot of ways that you can use it. There's a lot of things that um, you know have been a little cumbersome in, in curves traditionally, but have been hopefully addressed in the Sage Light Curves box to make using curves easier. So if you're not familiar with using curves, that's okay because as you can see, there's really kind of a one-to-one -one feedback. If I move this area, it's really moving the highlights areas and adding some contrast there. And if I move this area, it's changing the low areas and here it's it's uh, moving the middle. And so before we continue, I want to point out a limitation with curves. Basically, you can see that I've really been able to make a change here, uh, definitely for the better in, the, in this image, and I was able to do it very quickly. What happens is, is that when I move around with the curves and I get to a point where, okay, I like this, and let's say I wanted to bring up the shadows a little bit, you can see that I can't do that because the shadows really are starting to get flat. I can't really adjust the shadows very easily here because this is just one curve and I have so many things I can do within the space of one curve. So what I can do is I can close this window for example and then what I can do is I can just uh, use the sage light curves which as you can see I've already with just one slider movement uh, without really having to know how it works I just it says shadows and I move the shadows down you can see that in the histogram display if I if I want to display it you can do it when you extend the display it shows me the curve and you can see that it's basically doing the same sort of thing I just did making a, a curve and then what I can do is I can use these other curves to add contrast or to lower the contrast and then just basically make a lot of changes. So where I ran into a limitation before, I'm not really running into it here because I can really just do what I want with these curves. And the reason is, is because this is one curve. These are the same thing as there's four sliders here and each slider has one, two, sometimes even three curves to generate a composite. And so as I move these curves, even with these subtle settings here, I have as many as 15 of these, the equivalent rather, of 15 of these windows open uh, as separate layers. And so I would have to have 15 windows open to get the same sort of resolution I'm getting here. It's not that curves are not useful. They're very useful. They're just not useful in the way that they used to be a while back before all this new technology in how to deal with images has been developed over the last 10 years or so. So the question then becomes, you know, where are curves useful? They are useful, especially if you're used to curves. I mean, a lot of people like myself, you know, I come from a background where years and years ago I used Adobe Photoshop and curves were the way that you ended up uh, dealing with these tonal issues in your image. And so a lot of people really still prefer that because it's, um, you know, you can see it's, it's fairly easy to do and, and it's very straightforward. And what you can do is the curves in Sage Life has been designed very specifically to work in a, in a certain uh, area of the layer system. The quick edit mode, for example, has somewhere around 10 or 11 layers uh, that you're dealing with, like the saturation and hue is one layer, these RGB curves are different layers and the color spinner is another layer and the power box you know, are, are a bunch of different layers and the curves are inserted in a very specific place so that what I can do is if I move these curves around and then I decide that you know th let's say this is what I got and then I really don't care to move these curves around anymore because it's affecting other things what I can do is I can move these curves and just make a fine adjustment on what I've just done and that becomes a very powerful element with the curves in stage light. And that's just in the quick edit mode. In the pro quick edit mode and particularly in the power curves you can do even more. Like I said this video is really more about showing how to use this power box and how to select curves and uh, change curves around and what these buttons mean. But let me show you one more place where the curves can be uh, very useful. So if I open up another file here, um, I think it'll be this one. 
what I have here is I have a picture that is really, you know, we come across a lot of times, we come across pictures that are a little difficult to deal with. And so what you can do with the curves is you can edit this image here and certainly get uh, something a lot nicer. But what you can also do is you can go into the power curves and the power curves has a lot of different color spaces. And this is a subject of another video, but the LCH mode really turns out to be very useful for a lot of images because you can work with the light and the color separately. So you can see I'm moving the light around and then I can also move the color around. And that opens up a lot of territory because what I can do is I can add some contrast here and then, whoops, that was the uh, color. I can add some contrast here and then what I can do is I can uh, add some color more selectively whereas in a regular RGB mode, for example, you're moving the color and the light and so it's it can be a little less uh, accurate to work with. And so you can see that with this particular image, I'm able to really get a lot of contrast. I'm also able to get the color that I, that I want out of it. And then I can also play around with it a little bit. And so you can see I've got a very nice contrasty uh, image with a lot of color that I just wasn't able to get with the RGB mode. Similarly, if I were to, for example, pick another file, and um, this is a good example right here, where if I go back into the power curves, for example, you know, one of the things that um, is, has been put into Sage Light is, to make curves more useful is the chroma channel. For example, normally with curves, you just have the red, green, and blue channels on the RGB channel, and you can get a certain amount of um, changes in your image, but usually we want to change the color too. And so what's been put in, into the uh, curve section is the color curve, the chroma curve. So what you can do is you can change the saturation as you're changing the image. Because as you change the image normally in the, any space really, but the RGB space, which is really the primary area where you'd want to use curves, it affects the color. So you can see that it really starts to drown the color out as I add contrast. And if I wanted to add contrast, what I could do is I could go ahead and I could also add color. And so that gives me a lot of power with these curves. Also, I can change the color space very quickly. So I can go into XYZ color space, for example, which again is the subject of another video where I can similarly do the same thing that I did with the RGB curves. And so that gives me a lot of power. As I said, this is a subject of another video. So right now what I want to do is I want to show really how to use this box and how to select curves and how to make it uh, very easy to rapidly generate different curves and to change your image.